Lord God, we're so grateful for the opportunity to be here this morning, to share together, to be the people that you want us to be. Help us to open our hearts and our minds to the things that you said here today, and to be open to you to speak those words of encouragement that we need to speak to each other. We let our speaker this morning, Lord God, and just be with them. Share the words that you would have them share with us, that we might have our hearts open to the missions and and to the things that you care about, the things that you love. For our goal is to be more like you each other. And we look to you that for the evening for now. In Jesus' name we pray. How many of you have ever been to Japan before? Raise your hand. Okay. Oh, a couple of you. Oh, well, Daryl, yes, you're a speaker. Uh, it gives me a privilege to introduce this morning uh, someone to you. Uh, he is a close friend of mine. We do work together. Uh, but God has called his family uh, to go overseas and to serve in Japan. Daryl really has a heart for serving in Japan. This is a great presentation. Uh, he did it for our staff over at work. So uh, at this time, Daryl, without uh, further introduction, uh, come up uh, here and share with us. Today. So welcome, uh, Daryl, this morning. Thank you all very much. Uh, it's a pleasure and honor to be with you this morning and for David for allowing me to share uh, my heart for Japan. Um, I didn't get to see how many people have been to Japan. One, couple, me. Uh, it's an awesome country. Uh, uh, definitely fell in love with it. God uh, laid it on our hearts to go to Japan. So I want to share with you guys kind of my thoughts on missions and what I think God is telling us uh, through his word about missions. And um, so I've titled my service this morning, uh, Our Role in God's Plan for Global Missions. And um, just really I want to get across to everyone that God is sovereign over everything. I'm sure David has shared that with you and you guys all realize that. But um, God is sovereign over global missions and he wants the world to be reached with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And none would perish without hearing about Christ. And that's one reason why uh, Japan was laid on my heart. Um, I never uh, really had a desire to go to Japan. Uh, Katie and I both felt like we were supposed to go full time into missions and God was calling us to do that. And the more and more I've read about Japan and learned about the country, uh, the more and more I realize it's really a forgotten culture, and it's just a, a culture that's not been reached. So uh, I'm going to share with you this morning uh, a couple of stories and uh, some, uh, some thoughts from God's Word. So this is my family. I don't know if you've met some of us this morning. My wife, Katie, um, and Charlie's my oldest. She's 12. Um, and Sydney, my youngest, she is 8. And so uh, they have mixed feelings on Japan, I think. <laughs> When we first mentioned it, uh, Charlie, my oldest one, said, what about my friends? What about our dog? What about, I don't know Japanese. Um, and so she's working on that. Um, and Cindy would leave tomorrow. She has no care in the world, so. <laughs> Which is good and bad. Um, so uh, I want to share with you a verse uh, in, uh, from Matthew. If you want to turn there or feel free to read. Uh, but Matthew 28, uh, basically a lot of you will know this uh, is the Great Commission. So uh, it says, now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you to the ends of the age. So right here, God is laying down his plan for missions, and that involves us. And he's saying that he is sovereign over all of it. Um, that's the most important thing to me in the scripture. All authority on heaven and earth. Um, is through him. So uh, I feel like a lot of times uh, we know that God has all the authority. I think we believe that, but do we really believe that? Do we, do we live like it? Do we act like it? Uh, do we try to impose our plans um, on God? Do we try to uh, act out our own will instead of giving it over to him? I know I, I've walked that out. I've been on numerous mission trips around the world and uh, had the awesome opportunity to go to Africa a few years ago and uh, just fell in love with it. And uh, if I was single... I think I would have moved there. But I came back and I was trying to force my way into Africa. I uh, was looking at real estate on, online. Like, I really want to go to Africa. It was amazing. I want to go back. And it was just a spiritual high I was on. And that was not what God wanted us to do. Um, so, uh, you know, sometimes I think we want to uh, try to force our will on God. You know, God, I'd really like this to happen. Instead of laying it at his feet and allowing him to work it all out, which is kind of what happened to us. Um, so, uh, I wanted to share with you a uh, scripture uh, which really shows God's sovereignty and um, probably not a scripture you would think of to turn to, uh, but I'm going to talk about Job a little 
little bit this morning. Everyone's, everyone's favorite Bible character, Job. Um, so um, this is out of Job 1, 6 through 12. I'll just read it for you guys. Um, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, From where have you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking up and down. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? For there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, who fears God and turns away from evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for no reason? Have you not put a hedge around him and his house and all that he has on every side? Have you blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land? But stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will curse you too in your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your hand. Only against him do not stretch out your hand. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. So here we see Satan kind of doing the same thing he did to Eve in the garden, uh, saying, you know, did God, uh, do you, does Job love you because of your protection? He always makes us doubt and question things. So, um, so God was sovereign in the whole situation. He was going to allow some pretty awful things to happen to Job. I don't know if you, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the story, but um, really uh, we see Job lose everything he has. Um, he loses his servants, his livestock, um, his seven sons and three daughters were all killed. Um, he's covered in boils and sores, not anything I would want to happen to me. Um, and his wife and uh, three so-called other friends uh, always were talking bad about him and questioning him and asking him why does he still serve God, why does he still love God. And, uh, but all this time, uh, Job does not turn his back on God. He still knows that God is sovereign. God's only allowing things to happen that God wanted to happen. Um, so, um, and this is the beginning, uh, he questions him up until uh, chapter 38. Um, and so, in chapter 38, um, Job uh, kind of gets a, a tongue lashing from God. It goes on for four chapters. I just give you a little excerpt here. God says, Who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Raise yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the fa earth's foundations? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together, and all the angels shouted for joy. So this is, like I said, um, if you go on and read until like uh, chapter 42, God just keeps questioning Job, where were you when I did this? Where were you when I did this? And he's really laying out that he is in charge of everything. He is in control. Um, so then uh, we see in chapter 42, Job says, um, I know that you can do all things, and no purpose of yours can be glory. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me which I did not know. Hear and I will speak. I will question you and you will make it known to me. Uh, I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see you. Therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. So uh, right here we see that Job finally uh, gets it. You know, After four chapters of God really laying down the law with Job and saying, I am in control of everything. Nothing has happened to you that I did not allow. I'm sovereign in everything. Um, Job finally, uh, you know, repents and says, "I've, uh, I, I, I know that you are in control, God." So, um, so I want to share one last quick uh, thing before I really get focused on Japan. But I've been reading a book, uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer's biography. I don't know if you're familiar with Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Um, if you've not read that biography, it's amazing. It's really, really good. Uh, but in that, uh, here's a quote from Dietrich. Um, he says, "I believe that God both can and will bring good out of evil." For that purpose, he needs men who make the best use of everything. I believe God will give us all the power we need to resist in all time of distress. But he never gives it in advance, lest we should rely upon ourselves and not on him alone. We think the strongest this should align all our fears for the future. I believe that even our errors and mistakes are turned to good account. It is no harder for God to cope with them than with what we imagine to be our good deeds. I believe God is not just timeless faith but that he waits upon and answers sincere prayer and responsible action. Um, I totally agree with that statement. Um, God can use everything, the bad things that happen, the good things that happen. We've all been there, and we wonder, God, you know, how, how do things like this happen? I, my wife and I were talking this morning about a story we just heard about a pastor in Northern Kentucky who went to wake up his eight-year-old daughter, and she was dead. Wow, I, I, I have an eight-year-old. It really hits home with me. I, I could not imagine it. God is sovereign. God is going to use that to reach people. And that pastor is going to have such a testimony now that he can share um, that people will identify with 
But one of the stories that Dietrich shared in this, in, in his biography, and I, I could not find it for the life of me. I know it's in there. I was searching, can't find it. But I'll share it with you. Uh, one of his prison mates uh, was uh, in jail, and uh, he uh, knew that God was sovereign over everything. So he instigated things with the guards and was forcing them to hurt him. And he said, God will only allow you to do what you're going to do. So you can't raise a hand against me unless the Lord allows it. So he was preaching the gospel to other prisoners and sharing the word of God. And he knew that they couldn't do anything to stop him unless God allowed it. So they wound up not killing him because of that. They didn't want it to be a witness to the others. So it's just a cool story to me. Maybe you really realize that God is in control of everything. Um, so I know we all know that. And we've been Christians and we've walked it. But do we really believe it? When, when, when the push comes to shove, do we walk that out? So um, that's really what I wanted to get back to the beginning. God is sovereign over all. And what this has to do with global missions um, <clears throat> see who decides. Uh, God has a heart for the lost. I think we would all agree with that, right? Uh, he believes that none should perish. God sent his son so that all may live um, and all may come to know Christ. Um, so, number two is uh, God's plan involves us. We have to act it out. We're his hands and feet. Uh, it was by someone sharing the gospel with you that you've come to Christ. It was by someone sharing the gospel with me that I came to Christ. Um, so, um, God is uh, sovereign, uh, but we all are responsible. We all have a, a story uh, in this plan. Um, and God's will will be done, no matter what. He, he's going to reach Japan, I have no doubt of that. Uh, whether it's me and Katie, or another family, uh, other missionaries that are there, God does not want that nation to be lost. Um, it is considered the largest unreached people group. 127 million people in Japan, and less than 1% of them know about Christ. To me, that's amazing. Uh, this is a country that is wide open to the gospel. Uh, one of the few countries you can actually be a missionary. You can go to Japan and say, I'm going to spread the word of God. And they're like, okay, thank you. Have a good time. Um, you can totally do that there. And so there's actually more Christians in China um, than there are in Japan, which is a totally shut-off nation. You actually can't go there and spread the gospel. But yet, uh, there's such a focus on China, which is great. Uh, but really, I feel like Japan is really the lost country. It's the lost nation. You don't think about it. Um, and it's probably their fault. They uh, like to take care of their own. They don't like to ask for assistance. Uh, even when the tsunami happened, there wasn't a lot. There was some aid that went there. They really weren't asking for it. It was us reaching out to them. They didn't say, come help us, we need help. Um, which is good and bad. You know, they uh, they like to take care of their own, which is great. Um, but it's also okay to ask for help, I believe. Um, one story I wanted to share with you about God being sovereign uh, is uh, David Platt's, I don't know if you guys are familiar with him, he wrote a book called Radical. And he has an awesome uh, story that he has on YouTube. Uh, I highly recommend watching it. It's, it's a lot of kind of what I'm sharing with dating for, not anything about Japan. But he was traveling to Indonesia to uh, work at a conference and uh, speaking with another pastor. And so um, he was flying to Delta, and he just kept getting delayed. It took him 70 hours, I couldn't imagine 70 hours to get from wherever he was in the States, I think it was Chicago, all the way to Indonesia. So he missed his first four or five talks. The other pastor had to give all his presentations. So he makes a few jokes, you know, the other pastor is better than him. Um, and so God knew that he was supposed to give his talks because he's a better speaker than he is. But, you know, Delta uh, was reliable over that, was responsible over that whole situation. But God was sovereign. God knew what was going to happen. But David was not going to make it in time that somebody else was going to have to speak his messages. But God was sovereign over that whole situation, even though David didn't want to be in an airport for 70 hours. Um, and so, just a cool story that God really is in control overall. So, why Japan? I'm finally getting to it. Um, like I shared at the beginning, I, I've been on numerous business trips uh, throughout my life. Just a blessing to go. I went to Mexico uh, three times um, and uh, South Africa. And uh, every time I would come back home and share with my wife and daughters and show them pictures and just talk about, man, it was awesome. God was doing all of this. Most of my stuff was orphan work, and uh, which is funny. I'll get to that later. <laughs> but uh, um, most of it was all orphan work, and I absolutely loved it. Just I could not get over these kids. Um, it really hit home to me that it could have been me. It could have been any one of us in this room that were born in Haiti, or born in Africa. We're blessed beyond measure. 
and we were just born where we were. I think it's the, the luckiest thing we could luck into is we were born with the privileges that we have. And it's up to us what we do with that and how we bless others and, and what, we, what, we, what we do for others. Um, but uh, 2011, Katie and I were both able to go to uh, Haiti together as a couple. It was our first time together. And uh, just uh, built some churches there, put a roof on a church in like 100 degree weather. It's awful. But uh, God was working on our hearts on that trip. You know, I always felt like, you know, I'm supposed to do missions. I think it's short term, you know, you're going here, going there, um, helping out, and coming back home, and getting back into the daily grind and forgetting about these other countries. And so uh, we went to Haiti and our pastor was with, with us, and he had to leave a day early. So the last night that he was there, he was sharing his heart. He was a former missionary at the board for a few years, and just sharing on his heart just how awesome it was and how blessed he was. That but he didn't feel like he'd ever been as close to God as he was at that point. And um, so everyone left. We prayed. He left. We're just, Katie and I, I think, were the only two up there still, overlooking Port of Prince Haiti. And uh, God just laid on both of us. I, I think we both came to the decision, like, we're supposed to go. I don't know where, but we're supposed to go somewhere. This is supposed to be a full-time commitment. It was her first experience to actually feel it, to feel that call, of the call that I have felt for a long time, but I could never really share with her quite enough pictures and, and stories didn't do it justice. So um, we came home, didn't know what to do, I just, I think our minds were blown, you know, God, we really feel like we're supposed to do this, but I don't know how it's going to work out, and we have daughters and pets and we don't know any of the languages, and so we just started praying, oh, God, where do you want us to go? Um, we'll go anywhere. You know, I, I didn't have anything cross off my list. If he said Zimbabwe, I'd go to Zimbabwe. I, it didn't matter. And uh, just all of a sudden, Japan just started showing up. You'd see the flag in random places. You'd see you know, just just all these different signs. I, I, I fly a lot. Like David shared, I work for Answers in Genesis as well. And uh, I have, I'm blessed beyond measure with my job. I get to travel with Ken Ham on a full time basis. And he's amazing. And uh, so, uh, flying on a trip and there's a lady sitting two seats down from here that used to live like 10 minutes away from the city that God really laid on my heart. And I'm like, wow, what are the, what are the odds that I'd sit next to her? It's a, it's a city called Aomori. It's not like Tokyo or Osaka or any of these big cities. And she knew exactly what I was talking about. She actually corrected my pronunciation because I was saying it wrong. <laughs> I used to say Aomori and that's not I was trying to Americanize it. But I, I just... God just was putting these little confirmations in our in our in our path, so that we would know that this was the right thing. Because I don't know about you, but I really, when God tells you to move somewhere, doubts start creeping in. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, Japan it was. Uh, God just laid on my heart to see Aomori, and uh, I didn't know where that was. I had to Google it, spell it all wrong. Uh, found out it was in Japan, and that was really confirming we're supposed to go to Japan. And uh, just a couple weeks ago, this is a, a cool story, another confirmation. Um, uh, I, I bought a new computer a few weeks ago. It came with a, a hard drive, an attachable hard drive. So I didn't use it. I had really no reason for it until just uh, last week. And um, uh, I plugged it in, and there was a disc in it. And I thought, oh no, she's going to be so mad at me. I've had this for weeks, and I have her disc, and she's going to be really upset. Um, and I had shared with her that we were going to Japan as missionaries, and she never said anything to me about Japanese or anything. And um, I projected this disc, and it was uh, 12 lessons on learning Japanese. <laughs> I mean, what are the odds? Um, so it just, that was another confirmation, because I, I still have doubts. You know, I'm, I'm walking this out just like everybody else, and, you know, uh, we're trying to raise money now and, and walking this, this process out. It's going to be a long process. And uh, so yeah, I think the devil just creeps in and starts making you question again. Did God really say, just like he did with Eve, did God really say we shouldn't eat that? Um, and so, did God really say uh, you're supposed to go to Japan? Maybe you're not supposed to. Maybe you're supposed to wait until the girls are older. Maybe, maybe you're not supposed to go there. Maybe you're supposed to go somewhere else. And just that disc was like, I remember my mind was blown. I had to run downstairs. It's okay, you're never going to believe I found this computer. Um, it, was, it was awesome. Um, so, I shared with somebody in the back some of the statistics about Japan. Um, it's 127 million people, of which 126, just about, are lost. They don't have the gospel at all. Um, most of them have never even met a Christian. Uh, they've never 
heard about Christ. Um, to me, that's just crazy. We, we hear it all the time. There's churches on every corner. Um, there's 16 major churches in Japan, major cities in Japan, over 100,000 people that don't even have a church, period. Um, so it's a totally lost culture. Um, they're part of that 2 billion people in the world that are unreached. Um, it's actually considered the largest unreached people group in Japan is, um, because of that 1% that they're not the gospel. The church actually cannot support itself. There's not enough money coming into the church um, to sustain itself. So they need outside help for the gospel to be uh, presented to others. Um, there's only one Christian worker for every 500 to 600,000 Japanese. So there's a lot of work to be done there and no one there to do it. Um, so really, you know, I did not know this stuff before God uh, laid your hand on our hearts. And the more and more I learned, like, it was like, wow, this, this is where we need to go. We need to go there. Uh, when we were put in touch with the missionaries that we'll be working with, um, we shared with them, you know, God, we feel like God's calling us to Japan. They were, they were, they were, their minds were blown. They were like, wow. No one comes to Japan. That's awesome. We can't wait for you guys to get here. We can come. <laughs> so, uh, it's going to be a little while. Um, so, uh, Japan has one of the highest suicide rates in the world, um, 30,000 people yearly. Um, if we compare that to the tsunami, which was a devastating thing, um, that only killed, and that only is not the right word, but 18,000 people. So they double that just about yearly in suicides. And that's crazy. That's way that's way higher than the suicide rate in the United States. And um, I don't know. They don't have the gospel. That's one reason there's no hope. But a lot of it is um, they're just trained to work. They work, 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 work. And uh, there was a study, that, uh, a story that just came out that they um, have no desire to get married, no desire to even um, date. Um, there's just no desire. They just they're trained to work, 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 and then die. And so that's what they, they just see that I'm never going to get out of this cycle. I'm just going to work, 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 and die. And so a lot of them uh, end it themselves. And that's a, a very sad thing that needs to change. Um, the sex industry is also an issue over there, just like it is everywhere, it seems. Um, but it's a $30 billion a year industry in Japan. Um, a lot of, not a lot of trafficking, uh, but there, human trafficking happens there as well. Um, so it's another prayer point for Japan. Um, I kind of shared about that last one. Many young people in Japan live with no hope, um, with no desire to change. They just, they don't know about the gospel, so there's no desire to change. They just think this is always the way it's going to be. They're very much into ancestor worship and Buddhism. That's the primary uh, religions in Japan. And so sharing Christ with them is difficult. Um, it's a very shame-based culture. And so, which is good and bad, uh, the crime rate in Japan is next to nothing because they're afraid of if I steal or if I kill or if I do anything, what will people say about my family? Because there, you know, in the state, somebody, you know, somebody's son does something and they're like, oh, your son was crazy. You know, he did something. In Japan, they would say, whoa, what happened? The whole family's lost. The whole family's crazy. So they would shun the whole family. And so there's a fear of if I did anything, what would they say about my family? They don't want to dishonor their family, which is good. That's a good thing. Um, but it works against the gospel um, because they're afraid what would happen if I become a Christian. What will my family say? Uh, how will they treat me if I become a Christian? So a lot of times you can share the gospel with them and you'll talk to them about Christ and, and they'll go, oh, that sounds great. I'll add it to my Buddhism. I'll add it to my ancestor worship. And so they will pray to Buddha and their ancestors and Jesus. So getting across to them that he is the only God, that he is their savior, that he's their creator, he came to die for their sins, that's a foreign, that's a foreign concept when they don't get that. Um, Buddhism is very much in worshiping a lot of gods, and so to say that there's only one, that he's the only God, um, that's the work he's done. It's a, that's my desire to go there and do that. Um, and so uh, another thing that is kind of a new story as well, I, I didn't get it on there, is that the because, like I shared earlier, that they're not having children, they're, and they age, their, pop, uh, their average life expectancy is, expectancy is way high. Um, in the next 50 years, more than half of their population will be living off of Social Security, but not a lot of people paying into it. And no kids that will be going up and paying into it. So they have a decent economy now that's better than ours, but they're 
they're very fearful of what's going to happen in the next 20, 30, 40 years, that their economy is just going to be upside down. They'll be not enough workers for the people here. Um, so just another, another thing to pray about when you think about Japan. So this is why Katie and I, uh, we kind of started a, a, we have a Facebook page called Lost or Found Japan. Uh, that's what we're calling our ministry because we want to see the lost get found. Um, so um, kind of our theme verse, um, it really got laid on Katie's side, I think, when we were in Haiti. Um, this, for the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame, for there's no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is the Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how, how then will they call on him whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. That's out of Romans. And that really has kind of been our theme verse. You know, we really feel like God's called us to do this, um, to go and, and fulfill this kind of, I like to call it the Great Commission Part 2. Um, you know, it, 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 no one there knows about Christ, so they can't call on the name of the Lord unless someone tells them about the Lord. Um, so there's billions of people that on this planet don't know about God, and that's not his desire. We're supposed to go out and spread the word. So um, Katie and I are going to be going to this city right here, uh, the biggest city on the planet, uh, 37 million people in Tokyo. So I don't know uh, if any of you have been to New York City. Anybody? Take four of those, put them all together. That's Tokyo. It's crazy. Um, I had a privilege to go there uh, in December and spend some time with the missionaries and kind of just see the city and get a heart for the culture. And uh, man, um, I used to live in Seattle, and so I really feel like it's funny that God's called me to Japan because I had a really bad experience with uh, Asian people in, in Seattle. I really think God's trying to show me something there. Um, but um, there's a very large Asian population in Seattle. Um, so um, this is just a little bit of what the city looks like. Um, it's a beautiful city. Um, nightlife is crazy. They love to go out and they don't date. They just go out and drink. <laughs> um, that's what they do. Um, but it is, it's an awesome city. People um, were just amazing. They would do anything for anyone. Um, they, um, the missionary that we're going to be serving with, his name is Alex, and he left his iPhone on a, on a, on a subway train. There. They take subways everywhere. That's how you get around in Japan. And uh, he shared a story that um, he left it, was walking out, and a, a, a Japanese person saw it, and they jumped off their train, their train left, so they missed their train and to give him his phone back. And that would not happen in America. They would, somebody would see that phone and go, oh, look, I got an iPhone. Um, it's just, that's crazy. And that's part of that shame culture. Like, he wouldn't want anybody to think that he stole it or that someone left it and that he kept it. But he wanted to give it back to its rightful owner. And then it's really cool there, too. Their children can ride the subways for free. Uh, they don't have to pay. So we saw second and third graders getting on with their little uniforms and their $500 leather backpack that they have. They keep it from kindergarten through high school. Um, getting on these subways by themselves. And no, no fear at all that somebody would take them, that uh, they would get lost, they would get stolen. No fear at all. And once again, I like to say, that would never happen in the States. Never. Um, we'd get thrown in jail for a child in the and somebody would probably take them. Um, so, like I shared, the subway, um, that's how they get around. Uh, they, it, it's crazy. I saw people just like, like fish, like sardines in a can, um, getting around. That was actually really empty, though. <laughs> um, and then uh, they bike everywhere. Uh, they sleep on the train. You can kind of see in the bottom right-hand corner. Um, I don't know how they don't miss their stops. I've heard it's a very light sleep. Um, I'm sure I would just zip right past. And uh, you haven't seen people zip right past their uh, uh, stopped before. Um, and here we go, we see they're reading. They love to read. And for me, uh, God has really laid on my heart to learn Japanese and, and to get into it big time and be able to translate. And, because they love to read. They read everywhere. They will stop to read magazines while they're waiting for their train. They get something to read on the train. But they have no Christian resources. There's nothing. They have the Bible. Very little else is written in Japanese for them to read at all. I think we have we have one resource that answers in Genesis that's been in Japanese, um, and it's a children's book. Um, so I really have a desire to start translating things in Japanese because, um, um, if you all have heard, uh, Tokyo is going to get the Olympics in 2020. 
And that, to me, is just a huge platform to spread the word of God so that so many people are just going to descend on Tokyo. And it's going to be just an awesome opportunity. And so uh, that's really what God's been on my heart lately. I just, I got to learn it. Um, and we've been told not to start yet. Because if we learn anything wrong, it's near impossible to fix it. So we're waiting to get there and get immersed in the culture of learning. But I'm going to be studying like crazy, so I'm not going to be So uh, just a few more pictures of Japan. Uh, right in the middle is myself and the missionary that I'll be working with. He's actually from Ohio. Uh, as a child, God told him to go to Japan. And um, so as soon as his high school offered Japanese, he took it. And he can read it, write it, and speak it fluently. Um, so he's actually the pastor of a church called Tokyo City Church, which is where Katie and I will serve for the first two years of our term. Um, we'll be just helping him with anything, whatever he needs to be done. He's a one-man show at this church, and uh, he has no support whatsoever. So we'll be doing a lot of evangelism, uh, street evangelism. Uh, like I said, they ride subways everywhere, so it's always busy. Every subway stop has like a mall, and there's just all this, this all this stuff underground. It's amazing. Um, and so there's just people everywhere. So it's it's very easy to street witness there. There's a lot, and they'll listen, they'll, they'll listen. It's not like here where people walk past you and go, that crazy guy. They'll, they'll listen, to, they'll, they'll probably say that in Japan too. But they'll stop and, and interact with you. Um, so uh, that's what we'll be doing in, in Japan. Um, I, we attend the Assemblies of God Church, so we'll go on a two year term, uh, starting in 2015, and then we'll come back for a short period of time, right around a year, and then we'll go for four year terms. That's how this comes God does it. We can't go and stay forever. Um, we have to keep coming back to raise more support and to see our family and kind of have a relaxing period because uh, it, it will be difficult. Um, so just a couple more pictures of Japan. Uh, you see a little classroom there with the kids. Other church meets. Uh, actually, a room is about this size. It's in the third story of an office building. Uh, the bottom two floors, they need sandwiches to give the construction workers. That's what they do the construction company orders their sandwiches and they deliver them and then uh, the church meets above it. So um, so yeah, they have a lot of slot machines. They love to gamble with Japan. Um, just they don't have anything else to do with their time. They don't they just they work and they get done working and they go gamble and try to get, do it all over the next day. A lot of the, the marriages they are just they don't communicate. The husband's gone all day, they work long hours, long hours. Then before they come home, they'll stop and drink. That's the cycle in Japan. Um, so I wanted to share a video that uh, the Sims of God made uh, for for um, for uh, Asia Pacific is the area that we're going to. Uh, so I'll share that with you real quick here.
to me that the most important thing about that video, that what I want you guys to come away with and to leave with, is 900 million people that don't know about Christ just in the Asia Pacific area. And it's just, it's mind blowing to me that there's that many people that have never met a Christian, that have never heard the gospel, um, that don't, don't know about God, and they're dying right now. As we as we sit here in church and our kind of air conditioning room, it's uh, it's just crazy to me uh, uh, that we haven't done a better job of what God called us to do with the Great Commission that is to go. Um, so um, our role in the Great, in the great Commission, um, John Piper has a quote that says, um, "Go, send, or disobey," and that's really blunt, um, but to me that really is our role. Some of us are supposed to go. Not all of us can go. And, and some of us going is going next door, uh, going across the street, going to our neighborhood, going to our city, going to Cincinnati. There's tons of lost people in Cincinnati that we can do each as well. And some of us are called to give up everything, to, to pack it all up, to get rid of it, and to go to Japan, to go. We have friends who are going to Egypt right now. I couldn't imagine going to Egypt, but they're taking their two little kids to Egypt, to Cairo, they'll be right there where um, all those demonstrations are happening. We'll be right around the corner from it. I couldn't imagine. We have friends who are in Cambodia right now uh, that have been there uh, almost for two years. They're on their way to get ready to come back for a little while. And uh, just some of us are called to do that. Not all of us. And God respects that. God has given us all a role. Uh, some of us are supposed to sin. And um, and that's what my wife and I do. Uh, we help support missionaries as well. Uh, some of our, our missionary friends that we support, we call it kind of feeding the cycle. They help me, I help them, and I don't know what happens with that money, really. <laughs> so it's just a circle. Uh, I, don't, I don't know, but that's what we do. Um, or we disobey. Uh, because God gave that commandment to all of us um, to go or sin. And so uh, I like that quote. I feel like it's a little blunt. I don't like, I'm not a blunt person, but I think it's accurate. Um, and uh, once again, uh, kind of my theme is God is sovereign but we all have a responsibility. God's going to reach the world um, with or without us. You know, I, I love my job at Genesis and Genesis. Love it. It will be one of the hardest things I do. And they know I'm leaving. It will be one of the hardest things I do to actually turn my nose. To say, you know what, guys, in six months from now, I'm going to be leaving. I'm going to Japan. Um, it will be very hard because God has blessed me with my job. I will, I will love it. But if I stay... I hate myself. If I if I knew and I know that God's called to Japan, if I stay, just because it's comfortable, pays well, I love traveling, so it's fun. I get to be with Ken Ham and rub elbows with him. I get to shut his hand in the car door. We got the story for another day. Um, I would hate myself for staying, knowing that I'm supposed to be doing something else, knowing that God's called me to do something else. So. Um, wrapping it up here. Uh, we'd love to share with you guys more. Uh, we have a table in the back. Uh, we have our prayer cards. We'd love for you guys to take those and, and just you know put it on your fridge and walk by, pray for us. Uh, we are asking people to partner with us, to support us. Uh, in Japan, we have to raise quite a bit of money. Um, and you know what? God will provide it when he's going to provide it. I know we're supposed to go. Uh, our goal is to be there in 2015. Uh, if it's not until 2016, we'll go. But, as soon as we have the money, we, we plan on leaving, and well, God will provide it when we're meant to go. And like I said, God's sovereign over it all, so I have to live it out myself. I can't force my will on God. So uh, thank you all very much again for allowing me to come and share. Thank you, Dave, for having me, and I'm going to turn it back over. Jesus, uh, Jesus uh, and I can actually have your family come on. I think the best way to close out would be we'll just all pray for you guys and then uh, have a couple of our guys. But um, all right, so who's Charlie again? Charlie, Sydney, and his wife Katie. Uh, actually, he has some a treat back there. It's green tea pretzels. Green tea pretzels. They're very good. It sounds gross, but they put green tea in everything over there. Well, after you said that, you're not gonna eat it. Really so, um, I, I also. I also think it's uh, it's pretty cool because you know you always think about missions. You always think you know this is something I'm going to do later in life. But when you think about the fact that you know so young with a young family, uh, packing up and leaving, you know what is what is the greater purpose? You know it is to serve God and for His honor and glory. Um, so we will pray for them. I, if I can ask Phil, if you, Eddie, if you don't mind, please and Don, we'll, we'll pray over them uh, at this time. And I think it's funny that 
the opportunity to have another agent that's coming to speak with his church. So that's another sign confirming by the way. All right. <laughs> so I think that's pretty awesome. So uh, if I can have the guys here, you can get a hold of the mic. Each one of us will pray, and then we'll close out our service. We ask that you no peace this young couple, these two children who you uh, have the hedge protection on them as they prepare and as they go to pain and spread you or go since we are down as you call them for this detail. And you will look over them, take care of them, and give them the others quick for this. As you can, as you will, in Jesus' name. Lord, we do thank you that uh, you called there when I came from the village of Japan. And Lord, uh, thank you, Lord, that you, you did touch my heart. And I'm sure that others hear about you from the uh, lost people who uh, do not know you and you desire to have them follow you and worship you and know you as Savior. Father in heaven, Lord, as we uh, close out our time here this morning, Father, we thank you again for Daryl and his family. Uh, Father, presenting their heart for missions, Lord, to see the you know, lost saved. Uh, Father, we need to stop and reflect and just think about how blessed we are that uh, we know you as our Savior, that we have heard the gospel, that we have trusted you as our Savior, and that you have granted to us eternal life. Lord, I pray that we would not take such a privilege for granted, Lord that we would do everything that we can to not only have a heart for those uh, overseas, Lord, and the young reach, Father, but that we would take care and uh, watch over even our neighbor, Lord, who does not know you as their Savior, Father. So give us a burden to reach the lost. Father, pray that you would bless Daryl and his family and the plans they have, Lord. Finances are always a big thing. Uh, but, Lord, as Daryl shared, uh, you're in control. Uh, you have uh, sorted this plan out for them from eternity past. We know that you will bring it to fruition and that you will lead them, Lord, at the right time uh, with the right resources. And uh, pray that you would help them, Lord, just to keep their eyes focused on you through the uh, encouraging times and even the discouraging times. So we know Satan would love nothing more than the thwart these plans. But, Father, we give them to you and thank you that you are in control and that you lead us and guide us in all things. So, Father, help them, watch over them, Lord, and just help us to be a source of uh, a support to them and encouragement to them, Father. We love you, Lord. We thank you for showing us what you desire to do uh, all around the world. We thank you for your son, who is the central figure in all of history, Lord, that we look to him, not even now, but for him to come once again uh, to take his church uh, forever to be with him. For I give you all the glory and honor for asking all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You're all dismissed at this time.